come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits? The Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> Welcome, friends and lovers, to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, which happens every Saturday night, whether you're ready for it or not, right here on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Podbay, TuneIn, and everywhere fine internet podcasts are found. You can write to us at... Or I would just jump over to our Facebook page. We can hit a like button and then write to us. We'll read your comments on the air. We're at facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can also get a hold of us on Twitter at Sat Freak Show. And you can write to us on Thank via you. email, Saturday Night Freak Show, yahoo.com. And don't forget, you can find all of our past episodes on Saturday Night Freak Show.blogspot.com, which is our fantastic website that we don't actually pay any money for. It's fantastic. <laughs> We're so, a very big production here. Colin calls people, it fantastic because he. Don't runs you hear it. all the rustling papers back there? People <laughs> putting together our content for the this crew evening. running around right, yeah, and yeah. doing that. Yeah. Uh, so what we do is every Saturday we watch a movie, then we sit around the bar, crack open a few beers, and talk about it for your listening pleasure and education. We hope. I say not our enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes not our enjoyment. I wasn't ready this week. You say whether they were ready to hear it or not. I was not ready. This week. <laughs> so who are we? Sean. Travis. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched the movie chosen by Travis. And it was called Dude Bra Party Massacre, ma. Part, Part three. Part three. Now, why is the title a joke? Because it's not a sequel to anything. It's there's no part one, no part two. This is one of the notorious like uh uh comedy horrors, kind of the airplane mm-hmm. type horror movies in the league of uh like Leonard Cannibal Part Six. No, sorry. Cannibal the Musical. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um Club Dread. Mm. Um I don't count yeah, like possessed or anything like right. that. Because yeah. <laughs> there's not that many of this genre, and there's not that many really good ones of yeah. this genre. Club Dread was pretty good. Club Dread was really good. I was love a parody Cannibal the Musical. Of, of slasher films. So this is made by a collective known as Five Second Films. I think yep. they're like YouTube guys. Films. Yeah. Are they uh, you funny or die? I don't know. I don't think so. I think they're their own thing. Just five second films. Okay. Yeah, they're which not. are actually pretty funny. Are yeah, have you seen, yeah, any I've seen a couple of them? Because they've got five seconds. You just got five seconds. Oh, uh, gotcha. And so somewhere along the line, these guys said, "Hey, if we, we put make... five seconds together a lot, <laughs> we can make a movie." <laughs> yeah, they watch like well, like look at like shows like Tim and Eric Awesome Show, right? Yeah. It's what I call the like ADHD. Like these are almost freaking like schizo edited shows right these weird we're talking like stream of consciousness kind of stuff or what like we're just there's scenes and then like then there's another crazy scene and then another crazy scene or yeah and there's a lot of like cheesy like, like a liquid television kind of no, no well i mean liquid television is probably like a kind of a like an ancestor like an originator of this sort of like fast edit mm. sort of jokiness but like I, I don't know. I don't know why I always go to like Tim and Eric Awesome show just because they're they're trying to replicate kind of a public access television feel from the like the early eighties with really cheesy effect. It's like that's supposed to be part of the joke, right? Mm-hmm. And then like look at these shitty fucking effects and it and it's on VHS and there's there's static uh tracking and whatnot. You know yeah. and uh well, part of the joke of this one is it's supposedly recorded over a uh, <laughs> like a family heirloom tape or whatever. Family, what kids you family doing there, buddy? <laughs> 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 and it's been recorded with all the commercials taken out, so it's like yeah. the what the late night, the midnight morning show or yeah. whatever on some TV channel. Yeah, yeah. The, mid, the midnight morning yeah. show. What is it about the '80s that we keep going back to? It's just for fun nostalgia. to make things shitty. Like I said, that 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 like <laughs> that. Um, the fond memories of tracking. Well, because everything is too clean, right? I mean, how many of us, when we saw the new Friday Thirteenth remake, were like, all the girls in it were like these fucking Hollywood, like they were not real girl. It's mm. like, and it lost a little bit of that Friday Thirteenth flavor, you know? Yeah. Like, I mean, it's not like I those, agree. You know, so I think that's kind of the love of the or the joy of trying to make something look like the 80s or trying to uh that girl doesn't look like my next door neighbor why do i care shit like that 
Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. so, but, but really, I mean, I really want to like, I mean, that public access thing, that really motivates a lot of this like kind of new wave comedy, dare I call it, new wave comedy. It's more absurdity than it is comedy. It's more just like, wouldn't it be just fucking nuts if we have people yell for a really long like amount of time and it'll get like kind of nervous because you're like, so it's almost like people <laughs> eventually you'll laugh. people who might people that may be funny that are trying to do characters that are making a public access show that are kind of bad at it. And it's supposed to, that's supposed to be the joke is how cheesy and kind of lame it is because that's what public access was. Right. Yeah. Mm. That's just really bizarre. We're going to make something intentionally bad because by being bad, Welcome to, it'll like, be funny. Alternative right. comedy. <laughs> That's alternative comedy for you, right? Like, comedy got like throw. Like, I mean, especially, I mean, it's a comedy that is, I mean, really specific towards just video editing. Right, I mean, it's all about your video. Editing. What are you talking about? Like the style of, uh, you know, by distressing the, distressing the truck. It, look, it. Look, look, it's on tape, you know, or something. Or yeah. Well, for we sure. used to do like the, we, you know, there was a while that everybody was trying to do the seventies. Like, uh, I mean, we're saying it's the grindhouse aesthetic, but basically it was, you know, the remembered film uh, scratches and yeah. splices and stuff Grimy, like that. Dirty. And that's eventually morphed into now we're revisiting the 90s you know, VHS era. Yeah, well, yeah, the eighties or whatever. Sure, you know, yeah. But I suppose yeah, the nineties was doing it too. So yeah, you got the VHS movies that really kind of hung their head on that, right? Yeah. The idea that it's so scra- it's supposed to like freak you out in a weird well, not freak you out, but I mean VHS kind of used it for that, right? Like the weird kind of breakiness of it is supposed to give you kind of a jostle you to, yeah just like an unnerving feeling or something i never had like, like that's the thing though like aside from like some of the tapes that i'd rent you know where every once in a while there'd be like you know you, all of a sudden you'd get that distortion of the stuff raining down over the or rolling down over the screen like the stuff that i owned never you know i don't know i was lucky never had like, like a head clog yeah. or whatever right where the thing would actually get wrapped around the head of the vhs uh, i had that the all the time yeah. Pulling, pulling tapes out of that shit and the fucking magnetic stuff and everything would go with it. Having to hit the... Like, they don't make VCRs with tracking buttons anymore, I don't believe. They just do, like, auto track. Yeah, I think so, it. yeah. But you used to always have to sit there, like, if you had a really old tape or something, something you'd recorded off TV or something, a tape that had been recorded many times yeah, yeah, to get yeah. a different movie, always fucking sitting there hitting the tracking button until it went away. Well, I remember there was, like, the different speeds, too, yeah. right? Whenever you'd record There's, on, like, the slowest uh, or the super, lo- uh, fastest speed, EP. Super long play. And ex- yeah, EP it, and SLP. And that's Those probably why they're supposed shitty. to look so distressed is because, you know, you're putting three movies on a tape or yeah, whatever right, the fuck, yeah, right? Yeah. That's Re-recording the idea everything. that, <laughs> yeah, like, uh, people used days. to have... I, I had a buddy that had... <laughs> Like, almost the whole goddamn series of Seinfeld on VHS tape, oh, you know, like, taped off a of TV. It's just like, oh, that's gotta be a treat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but there is, because, I mean, I, personally, I, uh, you know, I grew up overseas, so the only video I ever got of American television was sent by my grandparents. So I did watch a lot of videos, like, mm-hmm. with that scratchiness. Did they cut the commercials out? No, oh, no, okay. we kept, so I like, I, I still have like the, my love of eighties commercials, uh, because I saw them all. Do you know how long this movie took to produce? I have no, I, I didn't research anything about this movie. <laughs> all right. yeah, I'm just Start curious because you can't Google it. <laughs> they have a significant number of like commercial breaks in the movie. And for each commercial break, there's they like one or it, two. Yeah very quick uh commercials that you see or something you but they're see, like, like the beginning or the ending yeah. because it looks like because it's funnier that well, way because well, like yeah, it like looks that, like yeah. the guy like tried to program to cut the commercials out there was like some like yeah titles they that forgot like the rainbow VHS. effect that would happen whenever you'd stop the playhead oh. and restart there'd be like this line that would kind of wander down the screen <laughs> yeah yeah they didn't do that in this they just do like the tracking glitch so, of course, Dude Bro Party Massacre 3 is kind of a take on the, probably like the Slumber Party Massacre movies or the Sorority House Massacre movies. So, basically, we're going back to the tried and true tradition of the slasher film. The yeah, right 80s, now, right. The 80s American genre. Because it was cheaper to do with effects or, you know. Yeah. And, the, I mean, the general gist of the slasher film is you put a group of people together in an isolated location and you turn a 
sometimes supernatural or otherwise super uh, uh, physically endowed killer loose on them. And the Slumber Party Sorority House Massacres are known for having, like, exclusively female casts, usually, like, scantily clad. Mm Mm-hmm. Like, that's where this movie kind of let me down. I thought they were going to go a little bit more for this, like, homoerotic kind of, like, you know, because <laughs> right. watching Slumber Party Massacres and shit, you're always like, oh, my God, all these girls in their fucking laundry. It's like, is this going to get a little, like, <laughs> is it? <laughs> you yeah. know? Well, they know who their audience is. Yeah. And, but I thought I thought this was going to be more of a comment on that. Like, wouldn't it be funny if we put dudes in the same fucking circumstance, you know? Oh, huh? And it's not necessarily that. I mean, this movie yeah. is a kind bit, of a, but... an amalgamation of a lot of different, like, genres of horror. Um, and just, I mean, just... Is it, like, um... What, well, I mean, it, I mean it's, it tries to, like, give you a little bit of every... Okay, like, the... You know, there's a there's a, a dude named Brock that gets uh, murdered at the beginning by... Like, I mean, they, since this is a part three, they spell it all out for you. You know, we start with a montage of the previous two movies, right? right? Like, these dude yeah. bros go to this lake house and Motherface is this, like, killer lady... Yeah, oh, she's like a now, was it, house mother for a sorority house that they burned down or something like that. And, right. Yeah. So was it? Oh, it was a. It was a mother face in the first one, mm-hmm. technically. And then it was this? her daughter okay. in the second one, and then there's like her sister. Oh, the, like like mother face's daughter has a twin sister or something <laughs> like that. Oh, it's yeah, like a yeah, newspaper yeah. clip you see. <laughs> oh Jesus. <laughs> and uh, so uh, Brock dies at the very beginning, and then you're. The same actor plays this dude named Brent, who is his twin brother, right? Weird. Yeah, that's funny. Get it? Get it? Uh, that's the joke. Uh, Every time uh, somebody uh, says it, they're like, weird. Yeah. Well, it's really funny. I love when, like, he first, like, goes to the frat house that he, because, like, he's, I'm going to join the frat. I mean, just, this is, like, Friday 13th part four, right? The guy, like, my sister was killed by Jason. I'm going to, like, wait out here in the wood. I'm going to figure out what happened. And so... You know, Brent's like, I got to join this frat house and, like, I convince them to go party somewhere so I can lure Motherface and, like, I got to look for clues. <laughs> that, <laughs> that clues thing. But I love how, like, this super cheesy jock, probably, like, one of the more, um, like, I bought that actor as a sorority guy. You know, you he's kind of a handsome like, Greg big dude. Right. The Who is sorority or fraternity? What are we the fraternity. Whatever, fraternity. fraternity whatever. It's Greg Sestero. Greg Sestero was in uh, The Room. Uh, you know, oh, no. The famous The Room yeah. movie. I haven't with, seen it. Oh, uh, no? You haven't seen it? Tommy Wiseau. Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. yeah, he was in that. He was in Puppet Master, I think. Ten? No. <laughs> he was in one of the Puppet Masters. Whoa. So they go legit- back to, like, Romania. And he's like the original guy making the puppets. He's a legit, he's like, super B level actor. Yeah, but he's super B level, yeah. yes. But I love how when Brent first walks out, he goes, Oh, he's like, he's like, yo, Brock, what, like, way to come back from the dead. Like, he's making fun of <laughs> this dude, Brock, for coming back from the dead. Like, I was, just, I don't know, that cracked me up. That was a good joke. No, I'm his twin brother. He's like, oh. Oh, whatever. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> the movie is uh, strung together then, just a sequence. I, here's, I guess, what the impression that I had of the movie, which I guess was kind of uh, uh, borne out by the end credits. It felt like there was a bunch of people, you know, because, you know, you know, it's, there's a collective who make these short films. Yes. Like each one of them wrote like a scene. <laughs> Feels like it. Without like they had like a kind of a framework maybe of where they wanted it to go. But it was just basically like you write this scene, you write this scene, you write this scene and you write this thing scene. And so there's jokes and stuff that are that kind of some of them work, some of them don't. But like a joke for every scene, some of them are just fucking insane and and they don't necessarily feel connected to the rest of the movie, which I think is like the point, right? Yeah. Well, but if you going watch... with that Tim and Eric kind of thing, where it's like it's almost it's not quite sketch comedy. Yeah, but I mean the it thing with be. the the guy right. the guy who lost his family, uh, you know, the <laughs> the, the, the patty, prank and just the Patty is, in his boats, yeah. yeah, and he's just crying over their gravestones and making <laughs> this big joke about like, oh, you guys are bad, you killed my entire family. Let's do something where I can take a picture, you know. I don't uh, remember him being yeah, Italian, Italian part, but we'll yeah. go with it. Because <laughs> in uh, we find out in uh, uh, Dude Bro Party Massacre Two, they flood the uh, the they they blow up the dam or something and yeah. flood L- the L- town. L Parchtown, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Get but it? that was kind of like your crazy Ralph, right? He was supposed <laughs> yeah. to be. Oh, yeah. Well, the your... warning, the character was, well, it, yeah. but Ralph is the harbinger if we've watched Cabin in the Woods, right? Mm-hmm. That's the function of that character. Yeah. He's but, the Dr. Loomis. He's like, see, I think that's where these guys coming. are like missing. It's like they're so worried about having a really quirky fucking weird character that they miss the actual like kind of reference or mm-hmm. like story points they're yeah, supposed the to be making with a slasher certain... film. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of missing that because they're just really worried about the jokes, like a lot of them. That's what I'm thinking. Like when I think back to Club Dread, it's like it seems like it has like the it like it functions it's as a, a movie. slasher it's got a narrative. Movie. Yeah. yeah, it is a it, movie, but it's a parody of it, it at the but same time. But the things time. people say are fucking ridiculous, right? Yeah, you know, Penelope. Yeah, <laughs> wait, you are a gymnast, <laughs> <laughs> but uh. uh <laughs> And oh, I mean, even like it's like you can tell they spent some money on some effects. Four hundred grand is what this movie cost. Four hundred grand, and they grand. did uh, like crowdfunding through who Kickstarter or something. Yes, and we found out about this through the ten minutes of credits where they thank every single person who's ever. Isn't that what you would you. do? I would hope. <laughs> <laughs> nope, all me. Well, Here you you have to. You Con- have to I know. I think you that. have to, but it's like those. It's only good for. I guess you get to show it to your friends. Like, look, I participated in it. Somehow I made this movie. Yeah. Because I'm one of, in the 10 minutes I know, of credits. I know, I know people that have paid, <laughs> like, for restorations of movies mm-hmm. just to see their names in the credits. It right. makes them feel like they're a part of something. You're yeah. in the credits, I suppose. Yeah. Right? yeah. Look, you like it. And the, I think Patton Oswalt might have, like, contributed a lot. That's why he kind of has, like, this kind of a... Kind of extended, a main character extended role. Extended cameo. That's what really fucking, like, He's like sucks about this movie is the cop story. That's where, like, this whole movie, like, you can Woo! you can yeah. nix that out. Yeah. The the B story? Like, why you kind even need a even B a, story? It's like the C story to a B story. It that doesn't even do movie. anything, like, at all. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's just, just a, a joke. <laughs> it really Like, is. Patton Oswalt's, like, a chief of police and... Like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, uh, Motherface is already around killing, and he's just, like, pretending to be... Or he's a Satanist. Yeah. Who... Since the oh, yeah. Needs the to of kill... A, the orange... That's one of those, like... This is the ADHD uh, the absurdity, comedy yeah. of, like... It's just absurd. Like, everything's a bag of oranges bopping on the nose where it fuck. It's just like, what are you talking... This is something the chief... Is, like, the chief has to kill a virgin, and there's this, like, dipshit cop guy that's a virgin. Yeah. And uh, Sminkle, yeah, some shit like that. It's a really <laughs> funny name, Sminkle. <laughs> that's not a normal name. And uh, comedy gold. Yeah, that's the problem with this movie. It's just like just absurdity, just absurd. And like I said, there are some fucking jokes I like. Like for yeah. the first half an hour, we were all laughing. Sure, the, you know, because they were that's making like just the the inertia of it. Right, yes. you come out of the gate and it's funny, but like, there's something about like the length. Like once you yeah, go into it should never whatever, be this long. hour and forty nine minutes. Well, they don't even you know? get to the lot like the cabin until like an hour, like forty minutes it to is. an it's hour. Four like, minutes it's, in, they're just like, "We've arrived at the cabin," so which I'm pretty sure is what they said. They're trying to make a parody movie, but like you said, they're not following a movie structure at all. They're not like, "Well, we got to get to this." It's like they're too worried about explaining. Jokes from the past movies, jokes for this movie, like because Brett has to meet his like wheelchair bound friend or whatever, yep. and you know there's a lot of jokes there. Yeah. He may have been the best part of this movie, really. The, the wheelchair guy. I mean, I thought whatever. the two females in the movie were just the best actors in the movie. Like, oh, the, thought, there's like uh, an annoying uh, with the meathead dude. Uh, it could have been could have been played by Jack Black. He was kind of like uh, blue. He, well. But he was What's like the a, dude's name from Animal House, not Jim well, Belushi well, well, or John okay. Belushi. But what was the Ludo. character? Uh, Ludo or something Ludo. like that? Was it? Something yeah, like that, he's whatever. kind of that. The you yeah. know the fraternity, the party and guy, the, and uh, the, Turbo, Turbo, Turbo. Yeah. and the stupid cop. I thought was also like like that guy could go on and do you know those two guys uh, off yeah. of Yeah, he's got something. Like he's got something to him. It's his voice and his acting. Yeah, and... not saying I like the character, but right, just but the, the guy him. was yeah the character is funny. Horrible performer mm-hmm. except for i mean that one joke about like i sleep with my eyes open so there's that or whatever and then he like falls <laughs> asleep <laughs> and then his head rolls down so he's i mean that was glaring funny. at her there's like that's what's so it's like there are really funny jokes if they would have just separated if you would have had like actual story or it's just some actual scenes mm-hmm. instead of just every line out of somebody's mouth is some sort of 
there's a unicorn over there, and I love unicorn. I mean, it's that yeah. kind of. Yeah, like, it's just okay. Whatever. So, well, you're saying and you HD. yell it. You have to yell it. <laughs> right. That makes it really <laughs> yeah. funny because they <laughs> might have not heard how funny it was. So if you yell it, yeah. So you're saying ADHD type comedy. Yeah. But Almost there's schizo. something. Yeah, it's beyond because that I guess to me implies that like you don't have an attention span. So like. We have to do something self-contained that's funny, and it doesn't matter if it's connected to the scene next to it, really, because right, you'll have yeah. forgotten about it because you have ADHD. Yeah, you don't care. But this is more like I don't know. You're how like to... looking down, making sure your your the flame is hitting your your ball correctly. <laughs> yeah, right. This way, when you can look up, you're like, ah, that's yeah, funny, and it doesn't have anything to do. Your head's in the bomb. Is right, it like so... psychedelic humor? Well, the, I, I, I mean, guess the that's a thing. way to think of it is a way of like a psychedelic alternative humor where you're not supposed to take it seriously. It's not even supposed to be a movie. You're just no. supposed to see the references they're doing. That's all you're supposed to really re- recognize is yeah. the reference. This is an old movie. This is, you know, the opening of Texas Chainsaw Massacre yeah. explaining the origin of the you know VHS tape. Mm-hmm. This is, you know. Which I thought was pretty good. It was just like, if it wasn't for some kid. Who recorded this off television <laughs> at three in the morning? You would never. Yeah, see Ron, it. Ronald Reagan had every copy. Oh Jesus! Oh my God! <laughs> it is right. the eighties. Yeah, this is not a movie you're supposed to watch. Just sit down and watch the whole way through. You think that's the thing? You're just I, supposed to watch it in like twenty minute bursts, or you're just supposed to like put it on and then right. just look up and be like, it's like catch that's jokes funny. every once in a while. Yeah, yeah so just, we did it wrong by sitting and actually I think watching so. the whole. Well, we started thing. like doing some like talking in between each other about like, oh, that's a funny reference, or this is a that. But then after a while, we're just like, Quiet. so why so does waiting that happen? for jokes? Well, I mean, well, what do you think is happening? I just there? think like, it's hard to... the jokes are the same. I mean, there are some yes. funny jokes in the movie as it goes on. But it, when you're sitting there, you're just like, you, it's like a feeling of like being beaten into submission yeah. or something. You can't keep your own. You can't energy keep the energy up, up that. Yeah. The, why? It's, it's uh, I don't well, know. You get that can't. kinetic feeling like first off. Uh, watching something like this, and then you just kind of lose that energy. Like it wants you to stay high, to kind of keep up with what they're doing, with the jokes, with the editing, kind of with the story. And I don't think you're able to do that for that length of time. But you've seen comedies mm-hmm. where you have laughed the entire way right, through it. But you got to build com- jokes, you and they'll have give you something. They'll give you something else, like within the like story. I think that's what. The, like, the, the story can give you something else besides laughter. Mm. This movie is only even going though, for the laughter. But even though sometimes only those stories are so fucking like cookie cutter lackluster, right. it's not even worth it. But I guess that's the point. Well, all that's that, all the you thing. need is a framework to hang the jokes on. Yeah. yeah. Where, in, see, in Whether the same this way, framework is jokes. But like, look at, like, okay, look, let's look at like Monty Python, the Holy Grail. You can look at that movie and see the individual sketches. Mm-hmm. You know, once again, this is something life, written just, by yeah, yeah. written by whatever six people who are, I yeah, know, whatever. How many people are in Monty Python? Anyway, right. So, but then they agree on some sort of an interloping story. I mean, I'm sure they write it together. I'm sure they don't just like send people. I mean, I'm sure they go off with their different, or they come together with their separate opinions, then think how are you going to work this into this one story and who should do what or whatever. Mm. And I mean, sometimes those are even kind of lackluster, you yeah, know, but, because it is hard to keep that. Or sometimes it could be the editing, right? Cause, uh, cause, uh, like David cross, uh, Mr. Show had a character called, uh, Ronnie Dobbs and they made a movie called run, Ronnie run. Yeah. And it's fucking horrible. But David Cross is like, well, you know, you can give me Gone with the Wind and, you know, and I can fuck it up. Mm-hmm. You know, if you give me the separate scenes of Gone with the Wind, I can, you know. And I think that's the problem is either either editing has no timing, either the people writing it have no sense of that, 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 bo- that, that story, uh, the overarching you know, skeleton kind of skeleton. Well, maybe that's the thing. That's the thing when you have twenty writers. Yeah. Well, there is like twenty writers. Did there's, we say that? There's, there's like twenty, 20 writers. writers <laughs> so, like, whoever came up with a certain part of it, I can imagine had nothing to do with later on parts of the movie. Right. So they don't feel connected in that See, way. I worry got... when there's three writers on a right. movie. Right. Yeah. You three have... writers. Yeah. Well, uh, three writers, everybody eventually takes a pass at doing, I think, beginning to end draft. Right. But, may, but, this but that's is like, not always the case. Right, some, when you have writing, writing partners teams, and like, stuff. Yeah. Right. 
But I like I had just you know it's ironic that you said Monty Python. I just watched uh, Meaning of Life the other day, and that is like specifically sketch Sketches. comedy bits. And but each one has like a I mean, is it a beginning, beginning, middle, and end? They all have like a very a specific point. point of parody. They right? have a each point scene. that they're telling yeah. you. So when you're watching it, it's like here's the setup and the payoff, and you're satisfied, and then. Then the next one starts, and so I guess at the hour and a half, you're just kind of like, how many of these can I take? I mean, well, even, even that one, it says like, like you know, the, you're going to have birth at the beginning and death at the end, so you kind of can feel the right. uh, trajectory killing of the movie. each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whereas even this, like, it's like there's a trajectory that you're aiming for, which is eventually, you know, a slasher movie conventions. You're going to have, I guess, final girl being final boy in this case, and they're going to have to confront Motherface, but. Mm. Like an hour in, I at an hour in, you're kind of like, I have no idea how far away that confrontation. Right, is. you yeah, don't know where no you are at any point in this movie. Three X, <laughs> and yeah, not at all. You're just like wandering in a sea of jokes. Was there a three X structure? Up. No, no, not at all. Because it takes them forever just to like get to. Because we have to meet every fucking character in the goddamn house. This is why, like, uh, like I don't know. Watching this, I felt. I don't know. I just felt like somebody that can't like stop writing, right? They're just like, here's all the people. This guy, did, 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 did. it's just like, holy fuck! You can't introduce them like later in the movie or like some other time. There's two characters. The I mean, they made a joke. The turtleneck bro, yeah, and the, the flannel, uh, bro. flannel bros, because we don't even know the fuck they are. And they showed up halfway into the movie like when they got at the, the lake house or whatever. <laughs> like just they just put them in there, and they're like, they'll notice them eventually. Yeah, <laughs> because one guy looked like Steve Jobs and. Yeah, I think maybe that's my problem, right? It's like, don't even look like dude bros. No, they don't. You know, no, they don't act. Like, but the way, I, they're kind of funny because the way they act when when uh, Brent's finally getting into the action and he jumps in the lake and he's like, you're finally getting into it, Brent. And just his mannerisms is actually really funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, define kind of, the dude bro for me. Well, the dude bra, you know, he's dude bra. about, you know, uh, crushing puss and like. Where's muscle, crushing puss and crushing beers, and a, and man. mullet. Yeah, like the guy who, like, uh, the very definition is the guy who was his biggest fear is that they would run out of beer. Oh, okay. That's the dude, yeah, bro. that guy, he just yelled. He's one of those characters. I'm like, <laughs> fuck, this, I kind of, because I kind of like the character, the, like, the super party guy. Mm -hmm. But uh, just the fact that uh, the whole, his whole, anytime he's on screen. Uh, screen, he's at that pitch, right? Yeah, he's mm -hmm. always up here. Whoa, what's the beer, bro? He was kind of funny in parts. But he was like, kill me, can you kill me 20 character. minutes in? Because I, I don't have the energy to keep going. With but that. some of this is like going with the slasher movie, uh, the the rules, right? Where you, not the rules, but what they end up falling back on that you use archetypes. Yeah. And I'm like, are the archetypes that they're using in this movie, like, do they, do they correspond to any kind of slasher movie archetypes? Or they're coming up with not necessarily new ones, but they're taking. Well, the, they're doing like the like Animal the, House yeah, archetypes. They're yeah, not right. doing the, a slasher movie archetype. They're not doing yeah. the nerd, the jock, the da 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 da. I mean, they try to do like a. There's a guy named Nerdly. Or yeah. Todd. We call him T O Double D for, for short. Sure. That's <laughs> a funny joke, dude. T O Double D for short. Oh, uh, Jesus. That's, that's uh, uh, rim who, shot. who doesn't want to have babies? Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, that was kind of funny. Like, she's pressuring, pressuring me to lose my virginity. Whatever. That was kind of weird. Once again, it's like they yeah. have no problem, like, losing reality, which so, a lot of times I'm really for. I love comedies because, I mean, that's the whole point of why I like these airplane type of sketch comedy movies. I like non-reality to be in my comedies. Like, I would rather a non-reality than, like, the... You know, fucking Adam Sandler and four losers from SNL 30 years ago, like, have to teach a bunch of kids baseball. Like, I know that movie. Uh, like, yeah, you, like, you just yeah. told me that fucking movie. Yeah. Like, I don't uh, need to see it. Yeah. Where I like when you can... I mean, comedy, just like horror, you need to kind of jump expectations. You need to really surprise people to make it funny. That could be by, like, some of the things that people say out of nowhere that are either absurd or whatever, but you can't just make it like donkey fart fuck. And that's just like, ha ha. ha, ha, ha. <laughs> that's what some of this movie was like titty jizzers or some shit. It's just yeah. like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those are two words that you put like funny ERs. But yeah. we think that that would be funny if it was a standalone, like, Two minute YouTube short or something. Just that yeah. scene. By well, itself I don't think just like random like 
monkey poop balls. I was just like, eh, what? Those are three <laughs> things you put together, and that's a, that's not a joke. That's not a, yeah. you know, I get it. You're trying to be absurd, but your absurdity should at least come with some sort of, like, a little substance. So some forethought or something like that, you know? And but A target, basically, you're saying. Like maybe, a target yeah, for maybe. the... Yeah, you're just throwing it you gotta it out. aim it somewhere. Yeah, that's the thing. And this is not aimed comedy. This is no. kind of... It's just kind of everywhere. Dude, the thing about the, the bully, like, I hate little dogs because I got a little hairy dog dick or whatever the fuck. You know, it's just like... All right, like, I yeah. see what you're doing here, but just the like, fact that he's referring to his own dick as a dog's dick or something like that is yeah. just like, I don't know. It's like we all have problems with our with our dicks, man. The only th- part I liked about that is they both took off their shirts. I was like, "This is what this movie should have been. It should have been shirtless dudes." Like, like there was a lot to- of shirt ripping. There was, well, there was shirt <laughs> there ripping, was. but it was more <laughs> yelling and ripping. just to rip yeah. it off. He's yeah, like, oh, well, but that was more like, like whenever they're fighting with somebody, or yeah. like you don't understand. <laughs> but I just thought that's to mimic funny. Slumber Party. This is always like I kind of don't think they. Right. I don't think they actually like. The movies they're parodying, and that's why it's not there, I think. They probably don't really... I mean, I could be completely fucking wrong, but... Well, so I'm wondering, like, you're saying there's no target, and you're specifically saying, like, the Slumber Party, but, but are they going after just, like, slasher movies in general? Well, but they do oh, an Evil know, Dead like, reference, so. like, really blatantly. And that that's pissed me off, because it showed some skill. You know, that scene showed some skill when... Because, like, uh, the... the Turbo. Bluto character, yeah, tr- Turbo, spelled E-A-U-X. Like, did you notice that? No. On his paddle, it's, oh, spe- no. it's spelled T-U-R-B-E-A-U-X, oh, Turbo. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, <laughs> but uh, he, like, I don't know, <laughs> he has a sleeveless shirt that he puts on. He always has that it's paddle. It's a sleeveless denim vest. Yeah. It's like the ha- denim jacket that he cuts sleeves and, and he has that paddle, like, strapped to him. Like, the, the whole movie paddle? waiting for this yeah. joke. So when he goes in this room, it's like, holy shit, he just turned into Ash and the Evil Dead. Because that's the shotgun strapped to him. Ooh, He's yep. wearing the blue denim, like, ripped off. Uh, and even the camera, like, angles and zooms were pretty, like, Sam Raimi-esque or whatever. Yeah. But I guess that's the kind of thing that you would expect more of. Maybe that was one of the writers or but directors maybe there, who like was trying to do something with. But maybe the Evil they had Dead. so many people working on this though, because like look at even some of the cop scenes where some of it is like fucking really like that blue moonlight, then yeah. others like really good moonlight. Mm. So maybe it, yeah. Later on, when he's tied to the thing, it's all like lighting, not blue light. It's that nice like kind of. Soft Sienta or whatever you want to call it, like it looks almost white, but there's like a slight shot blue this tint separately. Oh, well, it says there's three directors. Oh, what do you mean? Like, like I wonder if they were like shooting multiple parts at the same time mm. because there's so many guys involved with this. Right. I wonder if they j- could be. didn't shoot it start to finish, but I'm we're sure. like a group of people's like, all right, we don't need you for this, so go shoot that. We're That's shoot usually what they mean by That's like, what this feels in like. these type of comedies, like even in Monty Python, when they say directed by Terry Jones and whatever, they usually mean those guys were directing separate parts of the movie away from each right. other. That, that's what this feels like. That's why even some people think the Monty Python feel can be a little like, mm-hmm. just it's feels like, that little, you can feel Terry Jones and you can feel, yeah. uh, I can't think of the other goddamn director that usually does all. Uh, uh, Mike, Bill, no, uh, uh, Jesus. Terry Gilliam? No. Well, Terry Gilliam Terry was, Gilliam? Uh, yeah, Terry Gilliam. Usually Terry Gilliam the, and Terry Jones usually direct. I think so. Direct? Terry Jones, didn't he do a lot of the animation? No, that's uh, Terry Gilliam. Terry Gilliam? Okay. Yeah, but anyway, fuck it, moving on. We're not talking <laughs> yeah. about Monty Python. Just the fact that... We should know So usually they're not talking about, like, these directors work together. They're talking yeah. about, these are the three directors. They're not, they're not calling them, like, co-directors or second unit director because no. they're probably more yeah, integral one did to the, the whole creative. Cop thing was, right. like, one well, guy. Somebody did the whole cop yeah. stretch. Somebody did a lot, all the mother face, like, flashback stuff, and somebody did, yeah. And what if that's even what they do? What if they separate? I mean, goddamn it! I should probably have watched. Yeah, because I almost wonder if it, if it like just because of the amount of uh, like setups maybe involved in creating all of these uh, like the the commercial stuff and all that. Like, did this take place over you know years? Like, this was just something that they were working on in their free time, kind of thing, or like a week here or there, instead of doing just a uh, all at one you know at one period you know whatever filmmaking. Period. 
I don't know. Yeah. I, we don't know. We, don't know. we can't. Yeah, I looked up some information on this I and I found uh, <laughs> a couple of interviews no <laughs> with the, I didn't even know you could get this on DVD to tell you the truth. I thought this was like, if you go to their website, they, you know, say you can basically get a version of it that, for streaming or like one that right. comes with something else. Yeah. I didn't actually know there was a disc available, but Travis showed up with the Broterian collection I can't version of it's Dude Bro Party Massacre 3. So cheap looking on purpose. <laughs> Or just for production, like no, this is what like, uh, like some of our movies would look like, right? Well, right, you know, like you get the well, that's box what I'm that smells like it's deteriorating, right. like in your hand, like oh, this it's smells like, like it would get me like just the four toxic squares nausea, of nausea. the movie on the back, and yeah. It also says on the back the indie wire says it's an instant cult classic, but that's also part of the. This is like this trend that has arisen. It feels like it was born about the same time that the internet was, right? Mm. That you would do these kind of instant cult classic movies. Like, I mean, I go back to like Snakes on a Plane, Kung Fury. right? It was Kung Fury or, uh, well, yeah, but I mean, Snakes on a Plane was like made for theaters, but it was yeah. trying to be like some kind of put together package where like the thing would be delivered and it would play to these people who like, you know, watching Troll 2 or whatever in, uh, yeah, in groups. Right. And you're trying to make something like that, right. right? And that was like the mainstream discovering that. That was like studios discovering that that audience existed and then trying to give that to a mass audience next yeah. to the plane and having it fail miserably. Because they're like, oh, they don't really all want to go see stuff right. like this. Yeah. They because even those the people are fucking, they're counterculture, goddammit. That's all it is. People that like Halloween 3, Troll 2, <laughs> they're not real fans, goddammit. I refuse to fucking believe <laughs> these people sit down on a fucking Saturday night when they're by themselves and they're like, what do I want to do to enjoy myself? Troll too. <laughs> nope. It is a fuck. They're just being contrary. Tongue in cheek. They're yeah. just. I Troll two is hurt. apparent. I haven't seen it, but I'm saying that you've not I've seen heard. Troll two. No. no. Crazy. <laughs> no. Because no. it's Troll one of the one. worst movies ever made. No. Seen... <laughs> Travis, shut no. this oh, off. Shut, we're shutting this down. Shut now. Saturday Night Free Show does not exist until <laughs> Troll. It's like, look, well, come on. That's like one of the classic eighties. <laughs> Troll the... one is awesome. <sighs> Uh, kind okay, of awesome. well, where is it? <laughs> kind of the well, where is it? <laughs> it is Bring awesome. The freak show. It is okay. <laughs> I saw whatever that movie was about the making of Troll Two, and I'm yeah. like, that was funny. And I'm like, I, yeah. just from what they showed uh, the movie, I'm like, I don't need it. to see it. Everybody should idea, have experienced that the, on the, accident. Everybody should have been two? like, oh, Troll had some good special effects. Troll Two, it's about goblins. That's weird. Let's put it in. No, <laughs> but apparently no. it's an awesome uh, like crowd experience. No. Huh? I, I, I don't believe it. I don't fucking well, because believe everybody it. sits there and laughs at the movie. I guess so, but still, it's just like. But that, would any of them just sit down and watch? But it do you Saturday? like that movie? Like I like to me, my favorite cult classic is Phantom of the Paradise. I love that fucking movie. Right. Well, I that's like, a different kind of cult classic, right? Uh, well, I mean, it's 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 aware of itself. It's sarcastic. The characters are cartoony. You know but what I mean? Like, I guess that's where like my my original definition that I had of my, you know of what a cult classic was was you know they would talk about stuff like El Topo or Eraserhead or uh, Heavy Metal. Right? These are movies that had a following that was not like a mainstream following. Like most people didn't know about it or didn't like the movie, but there were mm. these fans who loved it and they were the cult. Right. Who had, so I had a cult following that was sizable. And now it's like cult classic. You know, I mean, I guess, is that what they're still trying to go for? It's like, they're these. It's just a short lived thing. I mean, yeah, it's an instantly prepackaged, you know, an instant cult classic that no one's going to remember two years from now, 30 seconds from now. Right? I mean, I guess we're uh, watching it, but... Yeah, I don't think uh, that's necessarily true. I mean, I think that's why, I guess, they consider it a cult classic, maybe. It's hard to... Uh, the I whole, can't believe we're talking about what the guy said on the box. It, well, but it's weird, <laughs> but we're in an age where, like, the the mass media identifies something as a cult classic. Doesn't that automatically disqualify it as being a cult yes. classic? Isn't that... That's the stupid but thing. But I haven't seen the mass now. media, like... I went to a comic book store. The guy said, check out this trailer on YouTube for Do Bro Party Massacre 3. I said, holy shit, I'm playing that on the podcast. <laughs> like, I mean, I didn't. there was no mass media that told me about it. Yeah. I've never even heard of Five Second Films. So mm. it's like, I don't think it's like being pushed as a cult. I mean, or whatever the fuck you were saying about how like the media decide. I mean, I don't know. I think I know what you're saying about think, me. I mean, I think they right. do that with like John Waters movies. Someone that is kind of like. 
really popular, but you know, not on the you know, they're still on the fringe, and they'll be like, he's a you know, a cult classic instant, blah 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 blah. I don't know. I think we call things cult classics now, where you could maybe almost talk to normal people and be like, oh yeah, I heard of that. They would never watch it or anything, but they've heard of it. Like I you think, think that was what makes I, it I think, a cult classic. No, I think that because a lot of people have maybe like heard of it. It doesn't make it a cult classic. Like, I think maybe a lot of people may have heard of this movie, but I think, like, what would originally be a cult classic, like, you had to have someone like, hey, here, here's this. Take a look at this. Like, it wasn't known that it was uh, an entity, like, that a lot of people would know about it. Maybe not have seen it, but well, know about it. But that's it. it I mean, but that is what kind of happened. I mean, with Travis, somebody said, you know, here, t- so it's kind of, it's working, like, in reverse, where now... Like where it used to be a cult classic was something that the press passed over, right? And the audience passed over, and you found it, and then somebody became aware that like, hey, there's actually people like when they show this, you know, dozens of people show up or hundreds right. of people, and now it's like we branded a cult, you know, the, now the, it's flipped. Like this is, I guess it's like that. the alternative press, right? So yeah. it's like it's a group of uh, reviewers who are fanboys of this genre. Mm-hmm. Sitting there going like this hits all the buttons of my nostalgia, you know, this nostalgia buttons. So this is like a little cult thing, and I'm going to by that way spread the cult by calling it a cult classic. So your friend hears about it and recommends it to you. By the yeah. way, Greasy Strangler. I'll come back to this later. Yeah, I've heard of this. I haven't <laughs> watched that trailer, but yeah, it looked fucking. That's your next weird. one, Travis. Greasy Strangler. The Greasy Strangler. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. Uh, this movie, not that it means anything, or you should judge anything by it, but uh, Rotten Tomatoes, hundred percent. This movie. Hmm. Do I appreciate you doing that research. Crazy. I, I did look up. that. That's where I stopped my research. I'm like, all right, fuck this. I'm this like, is one of those 100%. things. That's saying. why we can't trust. Ru- we can't trust rotten fucking. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, all. not that it means anything to some people, but it says 100. percent How many people things. reviewed it? IndieWire. I didn't look at that. At least IndieWire. So. <laughs> one reviewer says the right. Dude Bro Party Massacre Three is awesome. Right. Uh, uh, I mean, I think it's still awesome. The fact that they made it. I mean, it's something that people, you know. It is that kind of, I mean, this is what I was talking about before, the whole idea of, like, you know, that video has kind of democratized the art of filmmaking to the point where, like, anybody can do it. So now it's like, you know, you come up with a kind of a half-assed idea, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, because, you know, no. I mean, it, you can, it can go, be. yeah. You can, well, I've seen movies on Are videos. we diluting the art of filmmaking? Are we? There's so many things or available now. Nice I think is the accessible. You're, you're, but it's also taking away from like the collective. Uh, you know, like every a movie would come out, people would go see it. Everyone would have the same experience. Everyone would talk about the same movie, and so you had like a kind of a, a societal consciousness, mm-hmm. right, about this particular movie. Now you have everything's fragmented so much that you've got like for the fringe audience which you know we're a part of yeah. they're talking directly to us and marketing very specific movies to us so like we'll see movies like I hobo mean, with a shotgun exactly there you go <laughs> yeah hobo with a shotgun yeah like there's a i would say which most people in the shit. world have never heard the, of this fucking movie but like if you're in a certain group of people and you pay attention to the certain uh you know websites or whatever you have heard of or seen hobo with a shotgun a better movie than this. Whoa, that's a rough oh, thing. Probably. I don't know. That was fucking rough too. But it had like I it was just by its trajectory, it felt more like an actual movie. It was crazy, but it wasn't like absurd. It didn't feel like was it? Yeah, it was absurd. Come on. That was crazy. Really? Crazy absurd. Those are kind of the same. That one actually it, looked like it could be a movie, like. But that's all the production is, value. The still the the the, the actual. But was there like, not a story like? No, the like, actual like movie of it was too. I mean, we're start talking about Hobo with the shotgun now, but yeah. you know, <laughs> like I don't know. You could go abs- well, okay. Like I like Cobra. original trauma, right? Where yeah, it's definitely absurd. It's definitely on the fringe, but it's still whatever, you know. Shit, trauma. Once trauma got relatively popular, the comedy style fucking went overboard, and uh, just turned. You know, are they doing this kind of stuff now? I don't. I have no idea what trauma's doing now. Mm. But, but they uh, used to be like legit movies. I'd say. Well, okay. Well, they shot on. They followed the so. template of like a like what a film is. I mm. suppose like a story structure 
with those kind of beats of comedy or absurdist moments even like filtered in with it with like now we're like not even paying any attention to like making a movie it's just we're gonna do sketch comedy bits over and over and over and over and over and over and over well sometimes like okay check out like i don't know things like uh people are gonna hate me for this but things like (laughs) like van gogh and picasso already they're not painting pictures they're just fucking around with what they can do with painting right Mm -hmm. it's kind of that idea i think they kind of it's a very liberal idea of what art <laughs> can be or is. It's kind of like, fuck you, man. Who are you to say this isn't funny or this isn't, like, sarcastic or, like, blah, blah, blah. Like, you don't think yelling and screaming about beer or, like, I don't know. <laughs> well, sometimes I guess this is how you evolve the art form, right? You fuck with it until right. it becomes a thing. But it's like, does it actually... It a but it has to take off or it has to catch hold. And I don't know that... I mean, I'm... I mean, when I saw what I saw the director's cut of Anchorman two, and that was pretty like, you know, like all over the fucking place. I don't know even know what the the, the theatrical version was, right? Like, but it was like if obviously they didn't put that in theaters, but that was kind of the same thing. It felt like it went on forever. Mm. There were a lot of funny bits, a lot of not funny bits. We we're just throwing shit at the wall. It's a very like undisciplined kind of so, filmmaking. Yeah, because that's a, well, that's supposed to be the funny part of it, right? That right. is supposed to be what's funny, right? Yeah. And, like, I don't know, I mean, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. I don't know. A whole movie of that is not good. Like, we can't even really, I mean, shit, look how far we, like, we don't even talk about the movie because well, I mean, there's so many we're... fucking jokes in it. Yeah. And like, And you can't really even talk about a story. You can just talk about what certain characters do. And a lot of times, I mean, I, I always champion comedies because I'm always like, you can really not worry about a story and just tell you who these characters are. And you can learn so much more. Like, I think an actor that has a comedy character, I think he knows his, his character way more than any actor that's just doing a drama because it's written on the page. Yeah, they want to come make up their stuff, but comedy people, they have to create all this fucking weird, dumb shit about their characters. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it usually plays a part of the comedy, right? It usually, you know... Oh builds that character you know but uh this does not have i know that's why i was sitting here like, <laughs> as you were saying i'm like we're basically killing time talking about like the the phenomenon the of the movie of because there's not like uh because there's not a story there's we can't really talk about the performances because it's all just kind of like home movie quality stuff where you're just kind of fucking around there are some decent special effects. We could talk yeah, about that. That's but you true. can't talk about, like, I mean, we can rehash there's all the jokes l- for you, but then you can just go watch the movie. Is right. <clears throat> yeah. So there's special effects. Well, there's, there's a lot effects. of, no, I would say there's a lot of celebrity appearances, right? That Nina too. Hartley from yeah. the Porn Queen, uh, Nina Hartley. That's right. I, I, picked, well, I recognize her, even though she's uh, aged. Yeah, he, Colin picked it out pretty quick. Uh, because I'm a fan of Boogie Nights, Sean. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, Larry King shows up. Yeah, Larry King. <laughs> oh, Larry King. That one guy from Bones. And oh, Pat, yeah. Uh, John Francis Daly. Yeah. So this is because they're like friends of these people, yeah. right? They've done some of these five second shorts. Or something. Sure. Like these, right. these are Hollywood it's, it's people. What's in the comedy circle? Because John Francis Daly writes comedies. Like, yeah, yeah, I think he wrote okay. Horrible Bosses and um, I think the new Vacation movie. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, they're in those comedy circles, and I'm sure they all know each other. Or right. At least have so everybody's just doing or fans of each other. Yeah. yeah. So they're all involved in stuff like this. Yeah. I did yeah. appreciate some of the gore effects. There's a lot yeah. of creative murders, especially the fact that, like, in the opening, whatever, five minutes of this movie, where it tries to recap the Phantom, you know, Dude Bro Party Massacres one and two. Yes. There are some Bravo. pretty creative murders, like just a s- string of them, like one, two, yeah. three, four, five, six, you know, right af- one right after the other. And I guess that's why I was wondering, it goes back to my theory that this was shot over a long period of time so they could do a, you know, it takes time so. to, sh- to set that shit up, you know, and just, and to pull it off. And they were doing lots of them in this. <clears throat> And then when the actual murders happen in the movie, it's like, you know. There's barely any. Really? The actual story of the movie barely has any murders. I mean, it seems like everybody dies, but. Are we forgetting the murder of the youngest dude, bro? The pledge? (laughs) No. No. The the fucking baby. Yeah. That's a hilarious joke. (laughs) It's very funny because it's a dead fetus. That's when, to me, that's when comedy is just like, all right. Oh, comedy died with the fetus. Yeah. Like, I'm a pretty, like, dark comedy guy, but, like, when you're just doing, like, the dead fetus joke, it's just like, 
You that's it. That's the sink, dude. That's the fucking sink, right? Like, I mean, if you're gonna do it, do like the dead, the like the prom night dumpster baby thing from Family Guy. That like adds a little bit of spice and some like a funny song from a dumpster baby, you know? Yeah, not just like. You know, just I don't an know. actual just dead baby ripped out of a thing. Yeah. I will say, uh, what was his name? Nerdly, the guy in the wheelchair. When he makes his return at the end of the movie, that might be my favorite part. It's like, you want to see some cold ass shit? And then he calls a fucking Ca-caw. eagle down. <laughs> Ca-caw! And he calls a fucking eagle down. Oh, that's where did. the editing that's got great. confusing. That's where the editing like really got away from the, this is a VHS movie from the 80s. And it just started doing like YouTube editing. You just had like crazy fucking, like when the cop is is uh, losing oh, his yeah. virginity to the other, and then these, like, flowers bloom up. It's like, yeah. what the fuck is this? It's like yeah. a YouTube Boz Lerman movie or something. That's why I keep thinking it's, like, a psychedelic kind of, like, overlaid it, imagery. Because you're and on stuff your like yeah. fucking, like, you're on your goddamn attention drugs, and you're like, yeah, yeah uh-huh. Or <laughs> other... Ever see Super Jail? Other oh. substances. I mean, it is what? It's supposed to be a movie that you throw on and in a party situation. Yeah. You're not yeah. actually supposed to be watching it. I yeah, think. I don't think so. You're supposed to be seeing like five minutes of it, thinking that's funny, and then you got to go refill your beer. You end up talking to somebody else and blah, blah, blah. You're in the backyard. And whatever, you wander back in sometime so before it's over, funny. and you see something funny again. What is this movie, dude? It's Dude Bro Party Massacre, bro. Right. That's the perfect... That that's where it lives. That's where this movie is. That's where it belongs. Yeah, party movie. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we have anything else to say about the dude, bro? Party Massacre three? <laughs> no, we... nah, no. bro. Nah. <laughs> You'll good. have to go watch it for yourself. You will have to. We did not tell you Maybe. anything about this movie. <laughs> no, we really like. There's just nothing like, to. It. We gave you the flavor of it. Yeah. I'm convinced we captured yeah. the yeah. genie in the bottle. Talked about the yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, there's no mailbag tonight, but again, if you want to uh, contact us about this movie, your thoughts, maybe you thought this was the greatest fucking thing that you've ever seen yeah, in your life. Do you remember this movie? Maybe you've never heard of it, and because of our uh, talking about it tonight, you check it out. Anyway, let us know what you think at facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show or Twitter at Sat Freak Show or, yeah, uh, or Yahoo Mail at Saturday Night Freak Show at yahoo.com. Uh, but do you hear that sound? The hour has come, says. Lurk is our butler, by the way. For if you're just joining us and you're like, who does the he, fuck was he, that? Does he ever bring us anything? Like, I don't he's think a butler. Like, I could use a beer, but he's not. Well, he, sometimes he answers the door. I think he's actually guarding the door upstairs. That's what? why we can't, you know, How did we walk get in? freely around <laughs> the. Uh, well, why does he let us in? There's an origin to the Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, are we all like marked so we're like allowed in on the premises? And I like the way he that can't Sean doesn't even it. know the rules by which he I, like. He is just under the... showed up, man. Yeah, but he just lets he, us know the hour. He has roams come. the castle and you know creepy. sometimes lets our guests in. Yeah, but I'm not sure if they ever get out <laughs> because right. we never leave. I mean, they come back. Uh, true, that, right? Yeah. We don't usually invite guests. <laughs> usually, we just see them walking around the castle, you know, halls, and we're just like, oh shit. Oh yeah, we should hey, give a shout out to well uh, Holly. Down. Holly's not with us tonight, but I'm sure she'll be back next Lurk, week. What did you do? Yeah, we don't know. So Lurk basically is telling us it's time for wrap ups. So that means each one of us goes around the table and tells you what we thought of tonight's movie, with a recommendation or not. And we're gonna start with Colin. Hello, folks. Welcome back. And uh, Dude Bro Party Massacre 3. I think uh, since basically the entire show is a wrap, I'm going to keep this short. Basically. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically. I didn't care for this movie. Like, I wouldn't recommend this movie. I don't think of good conscience that you should go watch it. Uh, but I think there's a lot of funny parts in there. There's a lot of stuff that's not funny. It's kind of hit or miss. There's, you know, anytime you do that, you're throwing shit at the wall. Something will stick. So there's some good parts. If you're a fan of slasher movies, obviously this is like in your kind of wheelhouse. No, but uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I w- appreciated this more than I like kids in the hall brain candy. because this <laughs> oh, was at least, hey. But this was at least, you know, I like oh. slasher movies, so it's making fun of slasher Crazy. movies, that kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, I invented a pill that gives worms <laughs> to ex-girlfriends. Guys, just don't they get, don't it, don't get it around right. here. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one. Anyway. Great. Uh, yeah. So uh, we have a past episode. You should go check it out. Um, 
Yeah, so I wouldn't recommend it, I mean, except for a special occasion, which would be if you're having, you're in a fraternity and you've got a party and you need something to put up on the screen, then you should maybe throw on the Dude Bro Party Massacre 3 if you can find a copy of this uh, uh, legendary unicorn, the hidden mythical (laughs) beast. gem Yeah. Uh, but if not, I think by all intents and purposes, you can find much, much better, uh, things to do with your life. So <laughs> avoid the dude, bro, party massacre three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, anything else they do. Yep. Uh, I agree. Um, I can in good conscience. Uh, I can't see anybody just sitting down by themselves and watching this movie. Like I said, before, <laughs> I saw three guys do it earlier today. We were no, we were together. I'm talking about by yourself. <laughs> oh. Like I can't. Why? I wouldn't. No, don't do that. Um, like we said before, this exists in that whole like throw it on when you got a bunch of people over. You can look up every now and again, see something funny, and then go back to what you were doing. Because that's. I mean, I, there are funny moments in this, but. They are parsed throughout the movie, and yeah, it's for uh, if you're ADD, you'll love this movie. Um, so I don't recommend it to sit down and watch it, but put it on at a party, and it'll be great. So there it is. I would say don't even put it on at a party, because there's always that one guy that's like, Shh. like oh, come on, really? I came over here, and you're going to shush? Oh, fuck. I can watch a movie on my own. That's a good uh, case. I'm going to change my recommendation. I'm saying, dude, there's always that one guy that's like, we don't talk during movie. It's like, that's the movie theater. <laughs> I'm your friend in your house. I'll fucking talk to you. But, uh, like, yeah, I I mean, I am I should be the biggest guy uh, championing this because I love any sort of airplane type of movie, especially the horror-related ones. Uh, but I don't think these guys like horror. I just think it was funny for them. The whole mm. bro thing, to me... Well, they're think, not focused on the massacre. They're they, focused on the bro. Yeah, they're too folk. Yeah, they're just not. Because I mean, even like, dude, like Club Dread is barely a fucking horror movie mm. until the last twenty minutes when the killer comes out and it gets kind of intense. Like that. Like they they were able to change their fucking movie, you know. And that's something this movie could have done. Like if they would have even tried. That's why I was like, these guys don't like horror movies. Any any real horror fan would want to put in the comedy and the horror. So you're you saying know? their target was not the horror movies, but the dude bros. It's the and dude, bro it's the dude bros. or whatever fuck. It's the and it's just I guess how funny the slumber party massacre type titles or whatever the fuck are you right. know? Because I mean, it's a on, funny it, title. It's funny. It's a funny title. It's a funny dude title. bro party massacre. And like I could be completely wrong, but I think the whole like bra thing is all from that that one. Uh, college tape where that guy's like don't tase me bro <laughs> to the cops you know i don't know that i could be it's off surfer this. lingo bro or whatever bra, no, bra. 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 Yeah. would you be bra oh, but uh so yeah like all the i mean anytime i would watch one of these sketch comedy type of things i can always like recall like oh my god there was this thing there was this concept there was this joke that paid off awesomely that did 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 and this had like none of that. It was just like we're gonna say like dicks and and uh, titties as much as possible. And uh, they show in... some too, to their credit. Yeah. Once, once, yeah, in one scene or whatever. Yeah. The guy's name was funny, Galoshes Ted or some <laughs> shit. Where the fuck they called him? I don't know. Yeah, but like there was no. Would have lived. I mean, I when I first saw the trailer, I was really like, dude fucking mother face that's hilarious like i just thought that was great i'm like this is perfect like if there is a villain for a comedy horror yeah, mother that's it. face mother face is, is it. where was the song that Here's is your invitation it. to come join mother face, <laughs> mother face. right that oh Something, missed dude. opportunities i'm saying this is why it's like these guys did not did, i don't they don't like slashers they just like crazy comedy or there's or, just too many of them well, I mean, now with you two, I mean, everybody's trying to do, like, their own sketch troupe, you know, or right. whatever fuck, right? And then and venture out from there. Like, you ever see the whitest kids you know? Uh, I never saw They're, them. like, half funny. It's, like, it's so weird. <laughs> like, they're, they're my, like, gauge of, like, oh, this is what it's like when you're kind of funny. <laughs> and you do get a show, but you're kind of not funny. And, like, half your shit, I don't know. But, uh, I mean, I like I said, I never heard of Five Second 
uh, comedy films? or this whatever is, uh, the fuck it's called. This is good for the millennials. This is, that's a, this is a movie for the millennials. Maybe that's what I'm saying. Maybe it is. I don't have, I'm not on uh, psychotropic drugs or. Uh, I don't like, think they are either. I think they stone cold straight. Well, no, any antidepressant is like a psychotropic. So, so you know, it's fucking with their brain chemistry. So that's why they could probably follow that shit because it probably like slows time down. They're like, yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. It's like bullet time when you tell, something like that, dude. There's like I don't know. There's something really weird to it. But uh, so yeah, I don't like this movie. I probably wouldn't have made it on my own, which is I don't know, pretty depressing. I thought this was gonna be one of those like this is gonna be an internet sensation or uh, like people are gonna talk about this for ages or. Just whatever, but it's not. It's no Wolf Cop, am I right? No. Uh, I mean, Wolf Cop wasn't uh, really Wolf Cop, was it? Uh, yeah, I would almost, I mean. Uh, there was a screaming face splatter. Yeah, that was That awesome. was awesome. Yeah. But, there were some but this had gore. Yeah, but this had yeah. gore. A bit. I mean, they Wolf did... Cop's retarded as hell, too. I just don't, <laughs> like, I don't care about, like, I don't know. I, I want my comedy to be good. I don't want necessarily just to be like, look how stupid this is. Mm-hmm. It's like, eh, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah, whatever. That's Bravo. the biggest problem with this, right? Yeah. I mean, that's what we're saying. It's like, it is a bad movie. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, it's funny because There's it's like, horrible. There's like, you can pick out the good actors. You're like, oh shit. You're like, that person right. shows something. I want to see person. him doing comedy in something else. Something or like a different structure. character. This yeah, guy can't yeah. be something else. Or, yeah. or like, why the fuck did you go with this story at all? Like no one, wa- none of your friends were like, like, hey, dude, that's you know, this is running a little long, or yeah. this whole cop thing doesn't even make sense. You could take it out, and yeah. it won't affect anything at all. That's what I think. Bad movies are only funny if they don't know they're making a bad movie, and that's when they the made thing. It. You make you a bad can't movie make on an purpose. intentionally bad movie on purpose. Yeah, it doesn't. It hits it for like a half hour, and then it's. Just but like, they need eh, to be right. serious, not like trying to be funny, it. right? That's the idea, right? That's the thing. You they can't make serious. a bad movie and try to. They can't be trying to make a funny movie and make it bad. They need to be trying to make a real movie, right. And yes. make it bad. Right. It's yeah. funny. Right. You can't yeah. just be like, "We're gonna fucking act so retarded," yeah. right? But I that's... guess that's like the Ace Ventura comedy. That's just where we're at. Yeah. You know, no. we're just like, I like you, the said, way you referenced a movie that's like what twenty some odd years old. But that started the. That just started kind of the like. As long as I'm like goofy, loud, and like mm-hmm. just shape, change my face. And then right, Will Ferrell, Will Ferrell to me is the uncomfortably long. Like he was the start of that weird, uncomfortably. And then Mike Myers, did he do? I remember like Austin Powers. No! Well, Whatever. Well, well I mean, I don't know. I think Will, I mean, <laughs> Will Ferrell's more the awkward, uncomfortably long. Yeah, it's long. that awkwardness that I'm talking yeah. about. Uh, it's not just a, right. a like stretching out, like okay. editing or whatever. Right. I'm talking right. about the, the, awkward. the awkwardness right. of like how weird and the, yeah. yeah. Whatever. The, you know, you're supposed to get used to the setup punchline of sketch comedy or jokes. But if you have somebody that is. I mean, everybody's trying to be Andy Kaufman. Everybody's trying to be, like, so out there, weird and new that, you know, like, I could fucking s- sit on a stage and read Moby Dick and be serious and get, like, upset at the audience for not, like, you know, like, what, you know, you're leaving? <laughs> you know, no one knows when they're going to be a real artist comedian or just, like, a fucking goofball that, like, all right, people laugh at you because you're a goofball, but... Wow. You know, they laugh at the town idiot, uh, you know, <laughs> and it's not because he's funny. It's because he's the town idiot, you know, yeah. but whatever. So, yeah, take that <laughs> yeah. five second films. <laughs> like, I hope you enjoy you it. Bros. <laughs> like, I wanted to like this. Right. And some of your We've... jokes are funny. <laughs> some of them. We did bring it here under the guise of maybe wanting to like it. Yeah. I totally yeah, I yeah, wanted to yeah. love it. We always want to give that we always want to give every movie that option. Oh like, dude, hey, if I would have watched I'm willing this to love you. earlier in the week, I would have changed I would have been like, no, something happened uh to right? that. I couldn't get it. Like <laughs> it's a good thing you did. I would have fucked it back change. down. Yeah, I would have Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> so yeah. So that's, that's Dude Bro Party Massacre Fuck 3. Fuck it to hell. <laughs> <laughs> so next final week. Word. Uh, Sean is gonna be unschooling. Un- Maybe. Uh, I'll oh be shit! I'll be here. Oh ah! my god! Oh, winter's <laughs> coming. True. It's starting to get cold. It's <laughs> right, like dropping. Right. It's getting like seven. I got nothing else to do. I have to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be bringing street trash. Street oh, trash. That's I've another one I haven't seen. Hobos to. drink expired Don't alcohol. 
right, and right. melt and start melting in the streets. Right. You yeah. can watch it on YouTube. I hope that has a like. story. All My right. next pick is gonna be a real horror movie, <laughs> like a real one. Oh boy. Okay, right. so you're gonna have to stay tuned to find out what that is, listener. And <laughs> what, whatever then, that is. <laughs> <laughs> the suspense. They're gonna have to hang out. Uh, so until then, the basement is going dark.